One of the more frustrating things about being a Sega fan is the incredible back catalog of Sega arcade games that remain unreleased in any official capacity. I do not believe there is a single company even close to Sega with an equal stable of incredible games that have no modern way to play them. These games range heavily in genre and gameplay types, and many are unfortunately behind roadblocks like licensing issues that are going to make a modern release really tough. In this episode, I look at some of these games, how I felt about them, and the chances whether we will actually ever see a home version. Our first game is Desert Tank, a Model 2 arcade game that was released in 1994 and developed alongside defense contractor Martin Marietta. It's primarily a third-person vehicle shooter, but the multiple viewpoints can be switched on the fly. You will enter an area and you will need to battle armored vehicles, helicopters, missile placements, and other weapons of war to get to the exit before the time limit expires. The gameplay here is similar to many other vehicle combat games streamlined for arcade play and very easy to get into. You have machine guns and missiles at your disposal, and the relentless enemy AI will require you to be swift and decisive in your gameplay. The emulation you are viewing here doesn't do the arcade game justice. The sit-down deluxe cab was a thing of beauty, and the graphics at the time were absolutely incredible. Because this game was done in conjunction with Martin Marietta, Whatever license deal that would need to be made would have to go through their modern incarnation, Lockheed Corporation. I do not know who owns what assets in the game, but that likely means a modern release will never happen. It's another one in the long list of arcade games trapped with no way to play it outside of emulation. Dirt Devils is a Sega AM3 developed off-road racing game released in the arcade in 1998 and runs on the Model 3 arcade platform. Like many of Sega's arcade offerings, this was one hell of a fun multiplayer game. The gameplay simulates what it's like to slide around on dirt at high speed, which of course means the gameplay is power slide heavy and you need to anticipate turns well in advance. You can also expect to crash a lot as even the slightest nudge from an opponent sends you careening into the wall or into a ditch. Of course, being a Model 3 game means this looks incredible, and even holds up well today. The arcade cabinet was your standard deluxe and twin variety, and was very user-friendly. Why this one never got a home release is a bit of a mystery, as the Dreamcast was just begging for games like this early in its life. It also has no mandatory licenses attached to it that I know of, so later releases on other home consoles should have been easily possible. Current emulation isn't half bad if you want to give it a try. One of the biggest victims of being locked away in the arcade without a home port is 2000's Planet Harriers. This unique entry into the Space Harrier franchise is a combination of that game's mechanics with a splash of Panzer Dragoon to boot. It was developed by Amusement Vision, the guys behind the Super Monkey Ball games, and released on the Sega Hikaru arcade hardware. It features fully polygonal graphics with long draw distance and special effects that were bleeding edge at the time. This one has selectable characters that you can pick, and the gameplay was very reminiscent of classic Space Harrier, now with lock-on mechanics similar to Panzer Dragoon games. Much unlike those games, however, is a new multiplayer mode that allows two players to fight side-by-side -side and even execute combos. The dual sit-down unit was designed specifically for this, adding a great new spin on the Space Harrier formula. Sega fully owns the rights to this one, so I have no clue why there was never a home version. Emulation of the arcade hardware is also problematic at this point, making an accurate way to play it difficult beyond finding an original arcade cabinet in the wild. <music> Later. 
Late 1997 would bring AM1's love letter to classic motorcycles, Harley Davidson and LA Riders to the arcade. Set up mainly as a random checkpoint time challenge, you must blast your way through highways and city streets and make it to the finish line before the timer runs out. You can collect tokens all around the play area that increase score and available time limit. Finish lines are randomly assigned at the start of each race, and you have the run of the entire play area to find it. The suggested route on the minimap isn't always the best way to go, leaving a cool exploration element to the gameplay that most Sega racing games didn't have. This kind of made this one a unique game at the time, often giving gamers many playthroughs before they would see the same routes pop up. Being a Model 3 arcade game of course means that it looked absolutely phenomenal, with the sit-down deluxe version being especially nice thanks to the 50-inch screen and the hydraulic-powered bike you sat on. Licensing issues will greatly affect the possibility of us ever seeing this one at home, but it's a great playing game that remains on my wanted list for a modern release. AM1 would also be responsible for 1991 Stadium Cross, a superscalar motorbike game released on the Sega System Multi 32 hardware. This one is based on dirt bike motocross racing, where big jumps and regular crashes are the norm. The sit-down units here were similar to Enduro Racer in the arcade, where you had a bike with the ability to pull up on the handlebars to assist in jumps. It's a simple game by today's standards, but it's fast, fun, and extremely challenging. The closest we got to this from Sega was the awful 32X game, Motocross Championship, a game that looks, sounds, and plays far worse. As it stands, there's never been a faithful home version of this release, and since no licenses would tie it down, that's a damn shame. It would have made a great release for the Sega CD. One of my most wanted games in this episode is 1998's Model 3 classic Star Wars Trilogy Arcade. Developed in conjunction with LucasArts, this is one of the most graphically awesome Star Wars games of the era. It pits you in various scenarios from the original three movies, such as the Death Star run, Hoth Snowspeeder battle, as well as a few lightsaber duels. This even has some on-foot action and shootouts with stormtroopers. The unit used a single flight stick for the controls and a couple of event buttons to call for backup at various times. The game is damn hard too, with even the normal difficulty raping first time players. You can't deny the appeal here though, and being able to play these classic scenarios in an easy to pick up arcade scene was an absolute blast. My local arcade actually still has a deluxe sit down of this, so I can play it anytime I want, but I still very much want a home conversion. With the Star Wars license locked down with EA and owned by Disney, the likelihood of ever seeing this is pretty much slim to none. I imagine the cost of procuring the license alone would offset any possible gain for Sega, even if it was in a collaboration with EA. It's still an awesome game, and I highly advise you give it a run if you ever find it in the wild. You've heard me harp about this one for a long time and I'm going to do it some more. Outrunners is a 1993 release for the Sega System Multi-32 and developed by AM1. It's the evolution of the Outrun play mechanics. More tracks, more cars, more music, better graphics, multiplayer, and more choice. The fact that this gem of arcade goodness still lacks a damn home port still irks the hell out of me. I mean, what is here is one of Sega's best early 1990s racing games. It has everything. It's fast, smooth, plays insanely great, and the new and remixed music is top notch. It's the pinnacle of superscalar technology, mixed with gameplay so good it gives Polygon racing games a run for their money. So good an experience is this game. No matter where I am when I find it, I sit down and play it. The thing that really bothers me is the fact that there is no good reason why Sega can't release a modern version of this. Any license associated with the cars could be easily replaced, something that Sega has done with past arcade ports. 
It was released on the Genesis platform a year after the arcade, but that version is basically a different experience altogether. One of Sega's most prolific Model 3 releases would come in the form of AM2's 1996 classic, Scud Race, also known as Sega Super GT. Scud stood for Sport Car Ultimate Drive, and this one featured licensed cars such as the Porsche 911 and Dodge Viper. As with most Sega arcade racing games on the Model 3, you'd get some highly dynamic tracks to race here, many with tons of things going on all around you. The graphics were simply incredible, and right up there with the best the arcade had to offer. It also follows the same basic structure as games like Daytona USA, giving you checkpoints to make before your time limit runs out. A Sega Saturn version was planned but moved to the Dreamcast, where it was used in development tools but never reached a fully matured retail product. A shame too, because this game needs a release badly. It still looks great and plays exactly how you want an arcade game of this caliber to play. Fast, easy to handle, and with great track design. Some of the content of this game was used in the OG Xbox version of OutRun 2, but outside of that, it's still locked away from any type of official release. A modern game would likely need the car licenses stripped away to make financial sense for Sega, something I'd be willing to endure to have a port of this unforgettable classic. This is another one you've probably heard me harp on, and that's 1992's Golden Axe The Revenge of Death Adder. This direct follow-up to the first Golden Axe game was done on Sega System 32 arcade hardware and blew the original game away in every single way. It sported better graphics and sound, as well as four selectable characters with their own unique magic. It also featured multiple routes to choose during the adventure, adding some much-needed variety to the beat-em-up genre. Since it was on the System 32, it also has a bunch of cool sprite scaling elements, with entire portions of some levels scaling towards the screen. This is another sore spot for me because there is no reason whatsoever for this not to have been brought home. Sega CD, Saturn, Dreamcast, or any modern option could have done this game justice, and Sega is fully in control of the license. It's a piece of arcade history that remains locked away from fans with no good reason behind it. For the love of God, Sega, officially release this for something already. My last selection is a game that not only needed a faithful home version for years, but also among the many that have no earthly reason for this absence. Daytona USA 2 Battle on the Edge was released in 1998 on the Sega Model 3 and developed by AM2. It's a sequel to the ultra-popular arcade game Daytona USA, with new tracks, new cars, and a new physics engine and opponent AI behind the gameplay. The version you are seeing here is Daytona USA 2 Power Edition, which is an update to Battle on the Edge, which introduces a new car, track designs, and a few gameplay tweaks. Both versions of this game are largely the same otherwise, and look and play spectacularly. Seriously man, these graphics still blow me away looking at them today, and each track often has cool animated elements going on all around you, especially the amusement park track. Gameplay is deeper and more challenging, with enemy AI being more aggressive, and even the awesome multiplayer showing up stronger than ever. Sega has licensed the Daytona branding many times over the years for many releases, so why this game still remains trapped in the arcade is perhaps the biggest head-scratcher of anything in this episode. It's a beautiful game with top-notch gameplay, and leaving it trapped away in the arcade without an official release is ridiculous. Like Scud Race, some of Daytona 2's content would appear in OutRun 2 for the OG Xbox. Sega has a treasure trove of arcade IP untouched, 
and Daytona USA 2 here is an egregious member of that list. So there we go, Sega arcade games that remain locked away without any official way to play them. If you guys have interest, most of these are playable with emulators on modest PC hardware. Outside of that, be sure to play these classics should you run up on them in an arcade. There are many other arcade games from Sega that lack any way to play them at home. So if you like this episode, be sure to let me know down in the comments so we can continue to explore them in additional videos. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.